Hi stamping friends, welcome back, Sandy here. Today I have a fun technique for you, the floating ink technique, and I'm going to be playing with some new products from Ellen Hudson, the brand new sentiment stamp, That Thing You Do, which is fabulous, it's got all kinds of sentiments, and she also sent me the chrysanthemum stamp set and the dies, and I just wanted to show you the case, they're nice plastic cases, they're not cello, and the die actually comes on a magnet which is fabulous. I love her packaging and I just wanted to point it out to you. My ink for today's play is the Altenew Winter Wonderland watercolor brush markers. They're fabulous. I swatched them out so you could see all the great colors. We need to do a little bit of prep work before we do the technique and uh, again I'm using this lovely Mondo Chrysanthemum and you'll see it's three pieces so I need to mask it and I'm using the ink -a -dink -a doo masking paper and what you do is you stamp the image in black and then you cut it out, you peel off that blue backing and it's got a sticky on it like post-it notes so we're going to be using that in the misty to stamp our images and I'm white heat embossing them so that they will show up for the technique. I'm using Ranger Distressed Watercolor Paper and each of these pieces is four and a quarter by five and a half. You'll note I'm placing the piece of paper near the center of the misty because I'm going to be tucking that flower in the bottom left hand corner but I'm going to have some pieces off of the end of the paper. I'm using my anti-static pouch just to get rid of all my sticky fingerprints and anything static. I'm going to be using Versamark. Again, it's uh, for heat embossing. And I'm inking up my stamp, stamping it once, and then I'm going to cover it with a white embossing powder, shake off the excess, and heat set it. Placing my art piece back into the misty, I'm going to cover the flower that I just heat embossed with my mask. So I've got it all cut out and I'm laying it down there and again it's sticky on the back side just like a post-it note. So you're going to lay it in there, add your magnet, and then I'm going to take the two leaf stamps and I'm going to place them where I want them and I want the bottom of the leaf to be tucked underneath the flower. That's why I'm masking it. So it's going to look like it's behind by the time we're finished with this. Anti-static again and then I am going to ink up the stamps, close the misty, do my stamping, peel that flower off before you do your embossing because if you heat up the sticky on the back it's going to get stuck all over your art piece and you're going to have a nice little mess. So uh, just a heads up on that. So emboss all your pieces and get everything ready because you don't want to stop after you've got this mess going. I have some paper towel over to the left where I'm going to be putting my wet art pieces. And you'll see I have a little inkwell going on here. I'm going to squeeze some of the watercolor out of these pens and I'm going to use a brush to apply them. The colors I'm using are Ruby Red, the Rouge, the Lagoon, the Emerald, and the Persian Blue. And at the very end, on the third one, I'm also going to put in a little pop of Citrus Burst. You'll see it right at the very top over there. And so just squeeze till you get a good amount in each one. And uh, put the lids back on the pens because they do have a tendency to leak a little bit. And here we go. Fresh water and a number six brush. And you are going to soakingly wet the entire thing. You want puddles, truly. You want this as wet as possible because the ink is not going to run if it's not wet. You also need something pokey to hold it down with. You can tape these down to a piece of cardboard if you want. I choose not to. I just like the free hand of doing it. And so get the entire thing soaking wet and remember every time you start a new card to clean your water. So I'm picking up the paint and I'm just dropping it into where the flower is and you'll see that it starts to run and it's floating on the water that is sitting on top of the paper and the embossing is kind of bridging it in each of the petals which is kind of cool. So you go back and forth with both the colors and just load them up and let them bleed and try and not blend them all together when you're adding the color. If you find that they're not floating or they're not running, then your paper's not wet enough. You need to add a little bit more water, and you'll see me do that from time to time. And I also make sure that I clean my brush uh, before I'm changing over to the green and blue as well. 
You want to also go outside of where your embossing is because you want it to bleed into the other part. That kind of makes the background and it's very soft and muted when it bleeds out there and it's really pretty. So I'm adding some more water near the top and around the edges because it started to dry off. You'll see that happen. And as the red starts to dry, you'll also see some white spots. And that's what I'm going back in now and adding a little bit more red in a few spots so that uh, I fill in all those whites because when it's dry, it really shows up and it's not nice. <laughs> okay, so here we go to the leaves. I'm picking up uh, the blues and, and the greens and I'm adding them and they're nice and wet. So again, they're running. Going back in with my darker green, my emerald and adding that. And again, pushing some of this outside of the uh, embossing so that it bleeds into the background. And you'll see it start to bleed. Isn't it pretty? And you can move that around with your paintbrush, but don't muck with it too much. Or, um, I don't know, it just, it does something. It's better to let it do naturally. And again, I'm going back in and I'm filling in any white spots that I see. I'm also taking some of that ink and pulling it to the other side of the white so that it bleeds out a little bit. Adding some more water to it because I want it way lighter than the art piece. You want it to be a background, not a foreground. And you see down at the very bottom there where it's turning purple because that's the red and the green and the blue. That's why you don't want to blend them too much. You want to let them run by themselves. So I've just about got all of my white spots, I think, and I'm just adding a little bit more water to my background so that it will run a little bit more, swooshing it out a little bit, and I'm going to stop playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of red over there where there's a couple of white spots right along the edge and the center of my flower I want it dark and so I added some more of the red in there and I think I'm about done a couple of white spots on the outer edge and then I'm going to pick this up and move it over to my drying spot I'm going to clean up my water and we're going to start the second card For this second card, we're going to be using the Persian Blue, which is actually purple. And so the steps to begin are the same. You're going to wet the entire piece of paper, and then you're going to start bringing in that purple and adding it and letting it float in the water all around the flowers. It's really fun to watch it. This technique is hilarious. It's really fun to watch, and you look like a pro with your finished piece, but it's not really, you know, just kind of sitting in watercoloring. It's just letting the ink float around and do what it likes to do. And so again, let's start adding the emerald in, and then I'm coming back in with the lagoon and adding that as the second color. Again, pulling it outside of the embossing so that it starts to bleed into the center part of my card, creating the background. These two colors together are fabulous, aren't they? This is my favorite card. And again, I'm going back and I'm just touching up where I see any white spots. And yes, I do have this sped up a little bit, but this is almost as fast as you go because you don't want that water to dry out. You're going to get really funny lines if it does. So adding a little bit of the ink back into the leaves because I want them darker than my background and setting it aside to dry, cleaning my brush and getting new water. So I used up a lot of my ink, so I'm just adding a little bit more Lagoon before we start the leaves. And I'm pointing out that we're going to be using the yellow for this one. Back to wetting it. And there's a bunch of leaves that are in white embossed on here. And I'm just going to start adding the, the green and the blue. And you'll see that I start pulling it outside the lines as well to help create the background. And I'm going to bring in a whole bunch more water so that I lighten the bleed so it looks like a background wash. And I get a lot of blue in there, so I actually take some green and add it right in there. So if you find that your background is all one color and you don't like it, just make sure that it's still wet and add a little bit of green and then blend it around with some water to lighten it out. And you can pick it up and move it to other spots as well with a clean paintbrush. And as it starts to dry, you may notice that your leaves are the same color as your background and you don't want that. You want them to pop. So add a little bit more ink so that it's a little bit darker. And then at the same time in this one, I drag some of the ink off to the paper towel to lighten the background a little bit. 
And now I'm looking to fix all my white spots, adding a little bit of yellow, and I got a little bit too much down in that bottom left-hand corner. So you'll see that I pull some of that off to the paper towel, and then I come in. I pulled some blue from the leaf, and then I'm adding a little bit more and just diluting that out a little bit so that it blends and looks like it's just part of the background. Okay, back to these lovely sentiments. Again, this is called That Thing You Do from Ellen Hudson, and I have a little trick here for you. I'm adding glue dots to the front of this entire stamp set. I'm leaving it inside the plastic case. And I use three, and I put them in between the lines so that I'm not peeling any of the paint off. And what I'm going to do is lay this face up where I want it on my paper. I'm going to close the arm of the Misty and the glue dots are going to hold it on the arm for me. Lift up the cover. I'm going to ink it with my Versamark and then I'm going to stamp it onto my cardstock. I'm going to cover it with a white embossing powder, heat set it, and I don't actually do that, but you'll see it on the other side here. I flip it over and here's all of my sentiments. Now all I have to do is put it into my cutter, cut the strips, and I have all of these sentiments to use. And what I love about these sentiments is you have a nice big one and then you have a bunch of little ones that can go underneath and some of them are kind of snarky and I kind of like that. <laughs> So here's my art pieces and they're all dry, but I did want to point something out on the center card. You see that I've got some blobs at the top and the bottom. That's where there was too much water and I didn't notice it because I was busy doing the video doing the other cards. So if you find that you have a great big pool of water, just wick it up with a little corner of a paper towel so that you don't get that mark on your art piece. So I've covered the back with foam tape. This is thick watercolor paper, so you need very strong adhesive. And I'm attaching them to the center of five by seven card bases. I'm doing white on these ones, but I did blue on the other ones in the beginning. And I'll show you at the end the difference. And then you can just take all those sentiment strips and decide what you want your card to say. You could also put the big sentiment on the outside of the card and the little sentiment on the inside. And here's a quick fix for those blobs if you have them. You could add some sequins and that hides it a little bit. Or you could splatter some white paint on and that would kind of dilute it as well. So here's all six of the cards. The cool thing about this technique is two of them will never ever be the same. You just never know where the ink is going to flow. Uh, and I hope you will give this a try. They're sure a lot of fun. And they're very pretty end results without a whole pile of work. You Look like a professional. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. The links to all the supplies that I used are underneath the video. There's also a link to my blog if you would like the, to download the PDF with the cutting instructions, etc. Thanks so much for stopping in. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and until next time, toodles! Bye.